on the eleventh hour, the eleventh hour of the eleventh day, eleventh day of the eleventh month, of the eleventh month. We salute the millions who have served in our history. The new US 106 presents the Armed Forces Insurance Salute to Veterans Day. The songs and stories of American warriors, sponsored by Pearson Toyota and South Mountain Creamery. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. Ah uh, yes, Happy Veterans Day. It's Brandon, and we want to thank Wild Wing Cafe, Chesapeake, for providing our servicemen and women today with lunch. It was delicious. Wild Wing Cafe next to Sam's, just off Battlefield Boulevard. And tonight we're live there starting at 9 o'clock for trivia and karaoke and your last-minute George Jones tickets. I'll have uh, at least a pair for you. So uh, come on out tonight and join us. And we're joined in the studio by another veteran, probably uh, the youngest veteran that we have had on the air today. And I've had the privilege of interviewing the oldest uh, earlier today at 90 years old. Uh, this next guy, he's only 22. His name is Chase DeMaio. Hey, Chase. Hello. How you doing, sir? Welcome to the US 106 Studios. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for being much. here. Now, you served in what branch of the military? I was in the Air Force. And what was your duty there? What did you do? I, uh, I started out as a SEER guy. It's uh, Survival, Evasion, Resistance, and Escape. And then I went to Public Affairs, which is uh, kind of uh, photography, news reporting, marketing, speaking, Kind of a whole spectrum, kind of poster child of the Air Force, really. Are you still in? I am not. I actually retired. Now, something um, happened to you, right? Something did, unfortunately, happen to me. I uh, I hurt myself. Uh, both of my kneecaps got hurt. Now, how did that happen? I uh, I tried... Uh, you didn't fall, like, in the cafeteria. No, but close to it. <laughs> sorry, it, sorry. You could say it was in practice, I guess. It <laughs> in was, practice, uh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it that way. No, I, uh, I had a 90-pound backpack on, and mm-hmm. uh, apparently my knees just couldn't take it. So I, uh, I had some bad luck. Call it clumsiness. Call it whatever you want, but... Uh, you know, I'm still still alive and still doing my thing, so I can't complain too much. Yeah. yeah. So you've uh, so you're not currently serving. I am not. I uh, got out July 18th last year, 2009. But you, but if you could, you would be back. Absolutely. I I joined for six automatically, but since middle school, I planned on doing the whole 20. So is there an opportunity for you to go back with the injury or what? Not because they uh, they actually did a knee surgery and it was unsuccessful. So uh, unfortunately, unless uh, we have a breakthrough medical type thing, it looks like I will not be able to run for quite quite a while. But you were telling me earlier off the air that you had uh, something very funny happen to you at Langley Air Force Base. Why don't you yes. tell, about, tell us about yes. that story? It was uh, it was a disastrous week for myself because I was the on call news reporter. I got a call at 3 o'clock in the morning, and uh, just a quick backstory: They have in these hangars, they have um, a foam release, and if something, uh, God forbid, happens uh, in the hangar, you know, to an airplane or a jet, Mm -hmm. and a fire breaks out, and it's just not water that can do the job, they have a foam button. You press the foam button, the entire huge hangar that holds these, you know, F-22s, F-15s, F-16s, will fill up with foam. Let me ask you this. Does everyone know where this button is? Um... I'm sure like, everybody, everybody that works at hangar should know where that button yeah. is. That's kind of like everybody should know where the fire exits are of an airplane. Everybody should know where that phone button so is. So I'm trying to paint this picture. It's almost like being in a large apartment building or a school, and you see the uh, the fire alarm uh, button that you pull down when there's a fire. Yes. You know where it is, but you try to stay away from it. Exactly. Okay, go ahead. Exactly. Right, you don't gotcha. want a horse play anywhere near that thing. <laughs> right. Okay, go ahead. Um, but sure enough, uh, whether it was a lightning strike, that, that's what it was – uh, said because I don't think anybody wanted to take the blame, but the phone button went off um, in the middle of the night, and uh, of course it was raining out. Uh-huh. So nobody kind of, hit it; it was just triggered by electricity. I don't or know lightning? if somebody hit it. I, nobody wanted to fess up you. to this big you. disaster. Okay. okay. Um, Continue. And uh, so the phone phone went off, and I got the call because somebody had the idea to, hey, let's open up the hangar. All this foam is coming out. Let's kind of get it out of here. Well, when you add foam and more water, like I said, it was raining that night. Yeah. Of course, it creates more foam. Right. Uh, so when I arrive on site on base, uh, the entire runway is covered in foam like a uh, like a child's bathtub. Um, okay. We're talking about maybe a half a mile full of foam, easily 20 feet high, uh, stretching across the entire runway at Langley. Um, people's cars were covered with this oh. foam. The airplanes, of course, nobody knew what to do. Uh-huh. Um, there's really no way to get rid of foam. You can't add water to it. You can't do anything. So literally, uh, you had all the, uh, you know... Uh, emergency vehicles out there and everybody's scratching their heads didn't really know what to do so i stood out there and photographed it and news reported it for a couple hours and yeah. went to bed woke back up and sure enough the phone was still out there okay so how long did it last it stayed out there for very minimum at least 24 hours when mm-hmm. when all the phone was gone i drove by 
that next day in the evening time, and there were still some cars that were not found yet. Now, this is a very expensive foam party. It was. Unfortunately, a, do we know how much something like that would have uh, cost the government? You know, I don't think, I, I don't know. I would say uh, it, it didn't cause any damage, I'll say yeah. that. Um, you know, everything was fine. Nobody, Nobody's cars were actually messed up. Um, so I think it was more, at the very least, it was a good training mission for if something were to really happen oh, that yeah. was bad. I think everybody learned, you know, how it was going to react. Because it's one of those things like, you know, you probably learn it in school, but you don't really know what it looks like. So right, right. it worked out well. So you got to see it firsthand, at least. I got to see it firsthand and got to spend uh, a good day staying up with no sleep, video videotaping it and trying to figure out what in the world happened. It is so. uh, Veterans Day, and we're glad you're listening. We have Chase DeMaio in the studio, our youngest veteran at 22, uh, currently not serving because of an of an incident, an accident, which uh, he hurt his knees, so he's uh, uh, no longer able to serve. But uh, very proud to have served, I'm sure. Yes, he said absolutely. he'd go back if he could. Now, absolutely. there is another story you mentioned to me off the air, too. What was that there all is. about? Uh, we actually we got to do a lot of different things and interact with a lot of different company, er, countries, um, being a news reporter, and one that really sticks out was we had Afghanistan generals, um, and the generals over there are religious leaders, um, so it's a little different than over here um, in the States, and uh, we had these Afghanistan generals come on base here at Langley, you know, uh, down in Newport News and Hampton area, and uh, we got to uh, kind of walk them around base, show them everything that was going on, and we walked into a room, and there was a Wii set up, Nintendo Wii, and uh, we thought it would be really cool to trying to have these guys, you know, play the Nintendo Wii. So sure enough, the whole room was crowded with all these Afghanistan generals, never played a video game in their life. Right. And it'll always... What were, what were the age groups? Like, um, how old are they? These guys were easily 30 and up. Okay, okay. Um, gotcha. d- much different. You know, in the military here, you do your 20 years, you can retire. These yeah. guys were definitely... Um, past that, but they were generals, so you know you got to start somewhere. So they they had been in for a while. So you're playing now. I'm trying to picture this. You're playing Wii with uh, and probably Af- a, Afghan generals, right? Afghanistan generals, <laughs> complete. You know the the real deal. Something okay, like, you like was it boxing? Was it tennis? Was it bowling? It was but, tennis. Nice. It was tennis, and it was <laughs> nice. it was hilarious because you know I'm not sure I'm not sure if tennis is a popular sport right. in Afghanistan. So they were trying to figure out how to play the sport not only in real life but also they were trying to swing a little remote. Um, but the room was 10 by 10, and of course, you know, I'm trying to take as many pictures as I can. It was hilarious. Um, and that was something that will always, I'll always remember, you know, in, in my military experience. At the end of the day, we're trying to escort these guys out to their buses so they can go home, get a good night's sleep to come back on base. And uh, we do the count, and there's only 14 out of 15. We don't know where the other one is. And sure enough, we all start looking around, and we turn around. And sure enough, one of the Afghanistan generals is standing right in the middle of traffic. Um, what was he doing? The, we have no idea. Uh, he was just looking around. I think he was confused. It, it, mm-hmm. the, apparently, the road system is not the same in Afghanistan as America. So he was standing in the middle of the road, and we had to quickly grab him as you know cars were honking, trying to figure out what in the world this guy Wait, was how doing. How did he get in the middle of the road? He just wandered off. Why? I have no idea. Maybe wow. he was curious. But if you can imagine you driving on base, yeah, driving down the Air Force base, you're in the Air Force, you're getting off of work at 530, yeah. and you see somebody in Afghanistan military uniform with the beret, you're trying to figure out what in the world is he doing in the middle of the road. Somebody's lost. So it was, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure for many people it was a very funny sight and something that I'm sure somebody uh, will remember, that's, not only myself, but it was funny. Good. It was really funny. Chase DeMaio in studio, our youngest veteran at 22 years of age. Do you want to wish anyone out there a happy uh, Veterans Day? Uh, Every single veteran. After serving for the three years that I did, I came in contact with the greatest friends, the greatest mentors, greatest leaders. Um, So everybody, I know the commitment that everybody makes, all their families especially, because I know my family missed me for the three years that I was gone. So uh, happy Veterans Day to all of you, and especially Hampton Roads for supporting all of us. And thank you, Chase, for coming in this afternoon. Thank you, Brandon. Keith Urban right now on the new U.S. 106.